Hi guys, welcome to the Boar Shed once again. We've got a nice little 300 series Land Cruiser in today that we're going to do a little bit of equipment on. Nothing too crazy to start with. So we are doing a Invicta hybrid lithium uh, replacement under the bonnet here. So that's going to allow us to run a feed down the rear for a fridge. Good thing about the hybrids, they do have an app for your phone, so it'll keep an eye on charge rate in, discharge rate, everything and anything that's got to do with the battery, all from the convenience of the phone via Bluetooth. So that's gonna kind of take care of our dual battery setup. And then what we're doing is a Rhino Rack Pioneer platform. We do have a bunch of accessories going on this, which is kind of cool, on the rack that is. Uh, rod holders and all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Then we are also adding some lighting to the roof rack. So I've got a front light bar uh, left and right as well. And then in the rear, very, very straightforward to the time being. We're simply running a couple of power feeds from the front here for the rear, just to run the fridge for now. And if you're lucky, I might do a little tailgate light set up as well with a hardcore light. So let's get into it. This is going to be a fun adventure, especially when it comes to brand new models, brand new cars. You've got to uh, do a little bit of mucking around with them. But seen a couple of these now, so we're going to make this one come together quite quickly and hopefully it's going to be everything that Tom needs it to be for his trip to Fraser. So let's get into it, eh? Update on the 300 build. So, Rhino Pioneer platform systems been put together. Matt's just doing finishing touches. So, on the top, we're doing UHF antenna. The reason for that, there's no bar available for the 300 just yet. So, this is what we're doing for that option at the moment. I have plugged that with a PL295, basically, which is just a type of UHF connector. So, that way he can remove it because he wants to try and still get this thing under certain car park spaces, etc., etc. So the good thing about the Pioneer platform is all these accessories are bolted using their slide tracks. So in here, you've obviously got these M8 nut certs, basically, is what I'm going to call them. They'll slide into place and then everything can bolt into place. But then to get your accessories off, simply use a 13mm spanner bang, bang, they all come off, they slide out of position, and you've got a completely flat platform. So that's what we're going for. Everything's removable, unpluggable. Uh, but what we're doing is Darchi 180 awning is going on this passenger side. 
UHF here as well. Then we've got the recovery track holders. Uh, so we're going to throw a set of max tracks on here as well for him. And then you've got the rod holder. So these are just literally a click button type situation. Whack your rods in here and then you can clamp them down so they're not going to move anywhere. And then you do have the lockable uh, accessory holder. So you can obviously run a whatever you want in here, a shovel or a axe or whatever. And then they click in the position and then these do have the lock on them as well. So you, you can key that in if you've got something that is a little bit more expensive accessory wise. We have done work lights left and right, as you can see. So we've got the Road Vision 13 inch light bars on the sides. And then we do have the 40 inch light bar uh, for the front. But that's where we're at with the rack. As you can see, we've got the backbone system for this one on the roof, so it is ready to go. We're just about to lift her up and slap it on. So um, we'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, so I'm in the inside of the 300. As you can see, I've kind of pulled everything out. These being very new, we haven't seen too many of these, so we are coming up with a few options for the vehicles on location for accessories. So what I have done and what I've found is I've actually got a bracket made up for our UHF, which goes just in behind the glove box on the passenger side here. That way it's obviously up out of the way and it's actually got a really nice splice there to go into. So we've done that with the XRS from GME. There is no real option in the dash here, and that's what this still is. That's the reason why this is still here. So that there is obviously your normal centerpiece. There's no switch blanks or anything like that in here. So it's a little bit difficult to put something in place for the UHF. However, there was this little compartment here that goes in under the disc receiver, because this still has CDs, believe it or not, uh, which had a bit of a space in it, and I put a UHF pass-through down in there. So that should work fairly well. I'm pretty keen um, to see it once it all goes back in, but I have test fitted that and everything works perfectly. So that's gonna be really nice for the UHF. And then on the driver's side, we've just got normal switch blanks that I'm going to put the switches in for the light bar on the front and the two work lights that are going to be on the left and right side, which is sweet. These actually have the same uh, switch blank sizes as the 150 Prados. So we've got switches available for these, which is good. But that's progress so far. <laughs> Okay guys, so here it is, the 300. We're done for now. This is uh, phase one for the 300. So let's walk over what we've done. You've obviously seen it come together, but I'm gonna run you guys through exactly how it's all finished up. So starting with the roof, because that's probably where most of this actually happened, was up the top. Uh, a bunch of accessories have gone on, as you guys obviously would have seen. So let's start right at the front. We've got a 40 inch road vision light bar at the front. She's uh, nice and snug underneath the roof rack, as you can see. And then on the side, I've got two work lights, the 13 inch work lights, and we're pretty much running them as a under awning lighting on the passenger side. And on the driver's side, basically whatever Tom wants to do, he can turn them off on and off from the cab. Uh, that way he's using it at night 
basically looking for camp, at camp, whatever you want to do. Lighting there on the side, super handy for stuff like that. On the top also, we did do the flip down bracket for the GME XRS antenna. I will show you inside what we did with the uh, UHF as well. There's a little bit of customization going on there. But what we kind of did on the rack for Tom was he wanted to be able to pull all the accessories off. So all our electrics are plugged and all of the components are literally removable utilizing the Rhino Rack slide system. So everything is basically bolt on, bolt off because he still needs to get this thing in under particular areas. So that's what we've done there. Even the awning as well with the bracketry, we've made it so if you just undo all the bolts, that whole system will come off. That way the rack can then be a flat platform once again. He's got the shovel holders on the driver's side here and he's got the rod holder in the center. Then we've got the Max Trax holders on the other side. So there's a fair bit of gear going up on this roof. Uh, but with the backbone system, happy days. So pretty cool roof rack system that has happened on the 300. Now, for all you people who are going to ask, how did I get the wiring up to the roof? These are very, very similar to the 200. So you can creep it up the side underneath the trims on the windshield. So there's little tips and tricks for you if you're playing at home but they're a little bit different. Not so much space like the 200 underneath the actual clipping, so you kind of can hide it away, but there's definitely not as much room as the previous gen. Let's pop the bonnet. I want to show you guys just a little bit of what I did in under here. Nothing too crazy, but let's have a look. If you didn't know, it's aluminium panels. So, something different for you. Okay, this is where your battery lies. And in under here, we have done the Invicta hybrid lithium change out. So old starter battery, see you later. And Invicta hybrid starter in. So this is a 1000 CCA rated start battery. Plus it does have a 60 amp hour capacity with a start reserve. So BMS in these is very, very smart. This thing will also output uh, at a very, very large amperage rating. If I double check the actual current, discharge current 800 amp, charge current in 600 amp, up to. Now that's a lot on a lot of power. So this charges directly off your alternator, straight to the battery. Um, so what we've done here is we've just got a simple little fuse set up because in the rear we do have a little power system that's going on down there but that is obviously doing our light bar and our work lights as well, all from this one battery. Uh, so that's what we've done under there. Cover literally covers the whole thing back up and you don't even really notice what's going on under there. Uh, let's go down the back and I'll show you guys what we did in the rear for Tom. All right, here we are at the bum end. So very, very straightforward, simple setup. Tom wants to go possibly, he said, a draw system later down the track. But for now, he's just got the Waco, Dometic, sorry, whatever you want to call it these days, in the rear at the moment. So we've got a power feed that runs down into the corner here. I do have a little fuse box in, the, in behind here with the genuine one. So that's kind of running the rear setup. And all we've got is literally a power outlet for the fridge. Tom didn't need anything else. He's like, I've got USBs everywhere, all that type of stuff already in the vehicle. So we've just done an outlet for the fridge, but it is expandable. So if he does end up doing the draw system, we can obviously add to the system, which is already down here in the rear. Another little thing that we've done though is nice little hardcore light up here. So as you know, 200s were the same problem and they just didn't have any lighting at the back. So we've added the light here, which is very similar to what we did in the 200s previously. And we've got a little switch up here that'll obviously change it to amber and all that type of stuff, dimmable, everything like that. That's all literally powered from the little panel that we've got in behind here as well. So very straightforward setup, but he's gonna do Fraser very, very soon. And to have the hybrid lithium under the bonnet just to run this thing while he's over there, he's traveling all the time anyway, um, it's gonna do exactly what he needs it to do. So pretty cool little setup for the 300. All right, so we're inside the 300. 
nothing too out of the ordinary going on here except for this. So GME XRS Connect and we did the pass through down in this little position here. So this is the genuine componentry and it's got a little flip up so you don't have to look at it but if you want to utilize the USBs and the USB-C that's in there I managed to fit the pass-through for this in there as well which is quite sleek quite good and that way you can plug it in when you want to use it I always leave little mounts off I don't like putting things on where customers obviously would like to put them it's a very personal type thing I reckon so I leave that put it in the cup holder for the guys and away they'll go. On the driver's side, it's literally just switches in genuine switch locations for the work lights and the roof light bar. So that is it. Well, that's it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. If you like what you saw, please give us a thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any other videos that are coming up. Uh, comment below whether the 300 would be something that you would consider or you still like the 200 series. Horses for courses, but let us know. Thanks very much, guys. We'll catch you next time we put a car together.